Greetings RC friends, welcome to Props and Wheels. After a relatively long break, it is again time to continue with our two channel RC airplanes. If you have been following our channel, you may already know that I am obsessed with two channel airplanes because they provide a great, very inexpensive entry to the RC flying hobby. But these two channel airplanes have a big responsibility and that responsibility is after getting people started in the RC hobby, keeping them there. And the best way of doing that is giving them a great experience. So my goal with these two channel airplane reviews is finding the gems, the buds, and get rid of the duds. So far I have found a couple, and one of them has been this Flybear FX820. It's SU35. It really looks nice, especially with this black and yellow color and it's easy to see and it just needed a little bit of tweaking some addition of some weight at the nose and after that it flies great and it has proportional controls both in the throttle that's a must as well as on the bank channels so what do I have today? I have another yellow colored microjet two channel microjet and this is from another manufacturer called GHU XIA, XIU, I don't know if I'm butchering it, but it's a new manufacturer, I haven't seen it before, I haven't reviewed anything from this manufacturer before, and it is the model J-11B Mini. And on the box it claims a lot of things, and unfortunately I think those claims are false, so I just want to point those out. Here it says, 3-channel, this is not 3-channel, I can tell you right now, this is a 2-channel airplane. And then, here it says amphibious aircraft. No, it's not amphibious. If you put it in water, it's going to stop working. So don't put it in water. And I hate when manufacturers revert to this kind of uh, false advertising because it is not right. I hate it. So points taken because of that on this one. Let's open it up. All right, first let's start by comparing the size. They look very similar in shape, but size-wise this is larger, this is longer as you can see. And also a bigger wingspan, I mean look, the wingtips are wider, at the root the wings are wider, the shape is a little different, although not, not too different, especially in this yellow, and the design is different. So on this one, as you can see, the battery compartment the on off switch they are located on the bottom as well as the, the receiver board here there is nothing it's flat maybe that's the reason they are claiming that this can be amphibious but hey look the wires are coming out of here there are holes there are those little motors no it's not amphibious and it's definitely not three channels no movable surfaces so this uh, only uses differential thrust from these two motors two propellers you increase the power it goes up, you decrease the power it comes down and then you change the power setting of each differentially so you kind of yaw it and it also banks while yawing. So that's how it flies, these two, two channel airplanes. Okay, let's put this away and here is the control board over here and the little battery, it is one cell, 3.7 volt, 300 milliamp hour battery. So it's the little battery with the low C connector, which I love because this is kind of like standard on these planes and also similar helicopters. Uh, the, so this one doesn't have any, any stickers. So these are all painted on it. And I like that because paint does not lift off. Here it has stickers and they're already lifting up, so I have to make sure that they do not come loose during flight. Okay, and what do we have here? The controller seems exactly the same. I'm going to bring the controller for the other one, the FX820. And the same size, but it feels more plasticky. My hands. And it takes three AA batteries. So this is what came out of the hardware package. One set of spare propellers, color-coded. So this is the right, this is the left. 
So we have the two tail fins, they probably lock in place. I don't think we are going to need any adhesive. Oh, it's very flabby. I mean, just I just pushing and bent it to bottom. So this foam is definitely not as as stiff as this one. So this is really, really soft foam. I don't think it's a good thing. I don't think you can break this, but you know, being so soft, this is going to be flapping a little bit. Easy enough to push in, but be careful not to break these tabs or compress them too much. You, know, you have to just make sure that you are pushing them straight in. So this doesn't need any tape. I put tape on this one because it was a little more loose, but this is quite tight and in the place. And this is the battery charger. So I'm just going to connect the battery to charging immediately. Um, we have the landing gear. And this, was, this is not something I was expecting. It looks like there is a light set. For night flying, this is a definitely a bonus. I, did, I do not remember seeing that the lights were included and on the control board I'm seeing a connector here I'm assuming that's the, the lights and then I, what I need is I need to guide these through these two holes so that I can stretch them under the wing so when you're flying, when I'm flying I can actually see it if you put it on the, on the top it's not going to help you because it is flying above you so you need to see the bottom to tell the orientation and before I do that I'm going to connect and see if they are there working remote control airplane manual in Chinese as well as in English I mean run of the mill nothing special it has some color illustrations that's the bonus and it just explains everything I think pretty good so far I can tell and these are the clear pieces of uh, decals that are going to be used as tape probably to hold the lights in place on the bottom. And that's it. I'm having quite a bit of trouble pressing this connector for the light into that slot because the slot is kind of recessed as you can see here and, and there are two wires one blue one red that are kind of on the side but I am afraid of crushing those wires while I'm trying to press this connector in so I'm trying to be very careful I tried to push the wires out of the way okay I think I, I did it without breaking or crushing the wires so they are in Let's connect the battery this, that I brought. This is not its own battery, but for testing purposes only. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice, very colorful. I see, I see green, purple, blue, and yellow on this. And this is probably going to look great at night. Hopefully it will fly as beautifully. So let me turn on. The transmitter, it's blinking, usually you have to go up and down, it beeped twice, the blue light stopped blinking and it should be ready to go, let's check. So here you see it's proportional throttle, I have never seen unproportional throttle on any of these newer two channel airplanes, so, so let's see. So it is stabilized, you can see when I'm banking it, it is modulating, so it has a gyro, so when one wing goes down because of a wind, for example, it will increase the power on the motor on that side to ride it up, so. Great, did you hear that modulation of the sound as I pushed it right or left? That means the turn control is proportional as well, that's thumbs up. I'm not sure about the balance, but just in case, I'm going to take with me a penny and a dime. Dime is a little lighter than the penny. 
and the roll of tape just so that I can balance it on the field so that it flies the way I like. So as you can see, these lights are quite long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run them straight like this and then bend them around and then maybe bring the, the last one back up like that. So we will also have some wind tip lights as well. So just like straight down following the leading edge and then underneath the wing tip and then around just like this. Oopsie, I may have broken, oh, I don't know what I did, but I think I may have broken one of the wires because this one is, has a bad connection. If I move it, it is not as blinking as you see. Where is the bad connection? It's over here. Maybe I'm shorting wires, I'm not sure. So let me, may have been, uh, I, may, I may have been shorting wires because these are veneer coated wires, very thin. Yeah, do you see it? I think I did something. I may have to put a little tape between the different uh, minus and plus poles over here so they are not touching each other. I think that that's the issue. That may have done the trick, hopefully it won't come back, that issue. But so far it looks beautiful. Very festive, and the battery is fully charged, the light went off. Okay, I think we are ready to go out and start flying. Before that, I forgot at the beginning, I got this from banggood.com. It was on sale for $25.60. The shipping was $2.52, and total I paid $28.12 below my maximum of $30 I'm willing to pay for a two-channel ready-to-fly airplane. So, it is time for the outdoor testing.